Hey folks, this is Adam from RailsAutoScale.com and today I want to revisit a video that I posted not too long ago on active record connection errors, um, specifically with Sidekick on Heroku. And the reason I want to revisit it is because we recently encountered these same connection errors in our application and I was surprised to see this and um, I thought the process of investigating this was interesting and it uncovered um, some different techniques that I didn't cover in my previous video. Now the, the spoiler, the way this all ends, is actually um, ended up being a, a bug in the Rails 6 release candidate 1 that we were using at the time. Uh, that bug has since been fixed and um, there are no issues with this in the final Rails 6 release. But I wanted to show some of the techniques that I used to debug this because I did think that it was interesting. So the first thing that I checked when um, I saw this connection error is that I wanted to make sure I took my own advice from the previous video, which was to configure our database pools in our proc file. And now, quick recap of the previous video. The reason you want to do this is so that you can have a separate database pool configuration for your web dynos and worker dynos. So looking at our proc file, I can see we're doing it just how, just how we should be. Um, our web dynos are using um, a database pool that matches our Puma thread count, and our worker dynos are using um, a, th a database pool that matches our sidekick concurrency. So that all looks good. After having taken a look at that, I thought, okay, let's jump into production. Um, in a Heroku console and poke around a bit to see if I can see, figure out what's going on. Now, when I run this Heroku console, uh, I want to run it with a database pool configuration similar to how our worker dynos are starting, since that's where the issue is manifesting. So when I run this Heroku console, I'm, um, I'm running Rails console with DB pool set to sidekick concurrency, just like our worker dynos do. And once I'm in that Heroku console, I want to check a few things. The first thing I want to check is let's just make sure that this database, this DB pool environment variable is set correctly. Our sidekick concurrency is configured to 10, so I would expect DB pool to match that. And it does, so everything looks good there. The next thing I want to look at is um, the active record connection pool itself. Now, Active Record Base gives us a connection pool method um, that returns some information about that connection pool. So we can actually introspect um, our connection pool configuration in that way. And I would expect our connection pool to have a size of 10 if everything's working correctly. And when I ask for those settings, I can see that the size is actually 5, not 10. So this would explain why we're seeing these connection errors in production. Our connection pool um, has five connections, even though we're running 10 sidekick threads. So naturally, it's going to run into scenarios where um, sidekick threads are waiting for database connections. So the next thing that I want to look at, another thing that Active Record exposes to us, is um, an object representation of our database YAML file. It does this through Active Record Base configurations. This is, it just reads the database YAML file and converts it to, to this object representation. Um, and then the object representation is what it uses to create the connection pool and database connection and those things. So taking a look at our Active Record configurations object, um, I would expect to see the pool configured in there, but it is actually missing entirely. It's, it has the um, configurations from our database URL, but it doesn't have a pool size at all. So this is when I was feeling um, fairly confident that it was a Rails issue, um, but I wanted to prove that by reproducing it locally. So I exited out of this Rails console, and locally um, I just used Rails Runner to print out this act active record configurations object. And when I'm, ex when I'm invoking Rails Runner, um, I'm setting the DB pool config and the database URL config just like it would be in a production environment. And when I run this the first time, um, I actually do see the pool information in there. And that's because it's actually using um, 
our development database configuration that is not the same as the production database configuration. So we need to go into database YAML and change our development database configuration to match production. And then when we execute that Rails runner command again, um, we see that the database pool is missing and our database timeout is also missing. So we have reproduced this issue and this is the information that I used to file the, um, the issue in GitHub, which by the way was fixed uh, the very next day, which was awesome. Um, but I wasn't sure that it was going to be fixed that quickly. Um, and I knew that we needed to get this resolved. So I wanted to see if there was a workaround that we could use um, to, to avoid these errors. And um, prior to Rails 4, I think, maybe Rails 5, um, uh, Active Record did not automatically pick up the database URL environment variable you had to specify it manually in your database YAML file in environments like Heroku. So um, I thought, what if I tried that here? What, what, would, what would the result be there? So in my database YAML, um, I added a URL property and um, used the database URL environment variable for that. And this time, when I run the Rails runner command, uh, the database pool and timeout values are in there as, as we would want them to be. So this proved to be um, a workaround that we could use temporarily in our application until the issue was fixed in Rails. And as I said, the issue was fixed really quickly in Rails, so we were able to pull that back in and remove this from our application, and it's been working great. So. I uh, hope you found this uh, as interesting as I did. I, I just thought it was cool, the, the different tools that were available to kind of um, peek into your um, database configuration and your connection pool and, and that kind of thing. Um, if you do see these connection errors where um, it's waiting on a connection from your database pool, chances are it's just something misconfigured in your application. Um, and my previous video goes into detail about that. Um, but hopefully these tools are useful to you as well. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.